La STM vous souhaite la bienvenue à bord. Greetings and welcome back to the city of Santa Linda and episode 2 of Metro Anarchy where we have continued to slide into traffic chaos and here in the second episode we will attempt to rebuild the public transportation system starting with the metro in this episode. As we jump in, I want to remind you, if you enjoyed this video, please take a second and give it a quick like. Additionally, it is a huge help to the channel if you subscribe, and if you do, don't forget to ring the bell to get notification when a new video comes out. On that note, I want to give a shout out to the frustrated Canadian for being my very first subscriber and for the words of support. Be sure to check out his City Skylines video series. I'll put a link to it at the end of this video. Also, we'll get all the administrative stuff out of the way up front. If you have a city that you think I could use in a future episode, see the description below for how to send it to me. So as we jump in and uh, really take a look at all of the mayhem going on, we have got abandoned buildings we have got uh i don't even know what that is oh not enough goods to sell yeah plenty of that we've got dead people uh, more abandoned buildings and then over here we have a nice little criminal enterprise going on <laughs> fantastic and all of the traffic here so Yes, we have plenty of, uh, over here we've got garbage galore waiting apparently. Yep, garbage piling up as well. So let's jump in and see if we can fix this. Now, uh, last episode I mentioned that I, I'm not going to use a lot of mods, I'm not going to use a lot of custom assets, uh, but it, it, in this map I realized there are a ton. This is one of my cities, so as I'm going forward I will use all of the assets and mods necessary if someone sends me in a city. Uh, because this is mine, I tend to build pretty asset uh, heavy cities, so there are a ton of them out there. And uh, I also am going to put a link in the description to the metro and bus assets that I'm going to be using as we are building up this uh, public transportation system back up into a functioning city. We got down to 79,252 citizens. I think we started out at about 83, so we are hemorrhaging people. Let's see if we can jump in and fix that. So as I mentioned, we're going to focus in on one specific style of public transportation in each episode, and this one is going to be Metro. And then within that style, we're going to focus in on two specific topics. Uh, this episode, I want to focus in on two things I have seen lots of people ask questions about, and that is, how do you structure your Metro? And then... How much distance should there be in between the stops that you build? So jumping in on the uh, structure topic, the real answer to that question is you can really build it however you want. Uh, if you build a metro system, some people are going to use it. The question is, how do you build the most efficient metro? Now, if you build a metro system that has uh, separated sections so what I mean by that is let's say that you have you know one circle here and then another circle up here and then another circle over here and another circle over here so they're completely separate tunnel systems um, even if they are quite close let's say that you have you know a stop here and then a stop over here actually there's a stop attached to this train station you can see that under there uh, let's say that we had a stop right here and a stop at this metro uh, station in the train station and you built a 
pedestrian path across the river. Yes, people will walk across there to use that, but I have found that it really reduces the overall use of the metro system if you have separate tunnel systems. So the one thing I always stress, and this is going to lead into my next point uh, about using real life examples, is that there's no metro system on Earth that in reality has you know, separate tunnel systems where people have to walk in between it. So it, it isn't very realistic. Um, don't have to be realistic. As I mentioned in my previous video, my city here isn't all that realistic. But I do think from my experience, it does quite reduce the number of uh, riders in your metro system if you build it that way. So we're going to look at some real examples of uh, metro systems real quickly and um, from those get an idea of what types of structures you can build in a metro system that is all one connected system. Now I have to give a shout out to all of the city skyline players out there that uh, hand build uh, those beautiful uh, cities that you see in some of those youtube series i really got this idea from them you know a lot of times you will see uh, those builders using google maps or google earth to look at real life examples of say you know a train yard or a uh, power station and then modeling their uh city after that i got that idea when i was building public transportation systems and that we should take a look at uh, how metro systems are built in real life so i've got uh, three different metro systems for us to take a look at here now let me go ahead and just go into the pause menu for a second so we can bring these up uh, the first of those is going to be the Washington DC metro system. Now this is a great example of a spoke system. Now what do I mean by that? That is uh, going to look like a wheel, right? You're going to have the center of the city and then radiating out from that you have these lines radiating out from that uh, center. Now in the case of DC, there are actually a couple of central stations and that's absolutely fine to have that in your system as well. Um, the key here though is that everyone can get to every other line and you'll even notice there up on the north end, you've got two lines intersecting uh, you know, outside of the city center. That's also okay um, to have that as well. Um, the second uh, style that we're going to take a look at is Mexico City and this is an example of a grid system. Uh, this was the system that I had used on Santa Linda originally uh, where you've got uh, you know a bunch of north-south oriented uh, metro lines and then a bunch of east-west oriented metro lines. Now you notice that the on the uh, northeast end we've got one that starts out going north south and then it turns to going east west again that's perfectly fine but the core of this system is a grid based system you can see all of those north south running lines and then all of the east west running lines and again lots of interchange points for your sims to be getting onto other rail lines uh, Again, you can build it where they're separate, but I found utilization is quite a bit higher if you have the system all connected uh, like this. I prefer the grid system. I'm a pretty you know, organizationally mind person, um, but that's why I wanted to branch out in this video and do uh, actually this next system uh, is an example of, I think, what this is probably going to look a little bit more like, which is a combination of the grid and spoke system. This is the city of Shanghai. Now you can see in the middle, you've got a grid system. And then as it gets to the end of the grid, the grid stops and the lines continue on out into the suburbs as spokes. Um, this also actually has 
a circle around the outside and that's actually going to be what what we're going to build in Santa Linda here is a, a spoke system with a circle around the outside so as I mentioned there are tons of different ways to do it there's no one right or wrong way it's whatever way works best for uh, your specific city now some of that will be figured out by our next topic which is uh, how far apart should your stops be now with metros at least first thing to realize is that they can't really be too close there's really no downside to having a metro station too close to another metro station except for if you're building on a budget uh, you're going to have the added cost of building it and then the added cost of upkeep so if you're uh, like i am in this city on unlimited funds you always want to be on the you know too close end of things versus the too far away end of things um and but from that standpoint you can't really build them too close so the next thing to figure out is in your city how far will people walk and the reason that this is important is that you essentially have to realize that people are going to use the metro when they don't want to walk and uh, otherwise they're going to use their car when they don't want to walk so we need to figure out with each city uh how far are people willing to walk so to do that you bring up your main menu you go down here to this traffic routes tool and this is going to then show you under the routes tab you can see all the different types of transportation for a given stretch of road so i'm going to go in here where we've got all this traffic and click on harris street here uh and, and let's take a look at just the pedestrians so we deselect everything but the pedestrians and now this gives us a really good idea essentially people are willing to walk one kind of unit over uh, the way that I've built my city with these kind of old chunk units that are separated from the other chunks. Uh, if we go over here and take a look, same thing. Essentially, people will walk one unit and I've got some people that will walk all the way across this bridge uh, but not much farther um, but really uh, no one will walk up here uh, and people will walk actually quite a ways over here but that is just one person uh, the majority of people that are walking are really just walking within one unit so this would tell me in my city that I want to have a stop that essentially services each one of these chunks of city okay so with your city you want to do the same thing take a look at the pedestrian traffic and figure out how far are people willing to walk anything beyond that they're gonna want to use a metro system so that gives us a really good idea of how to start so those were the two things that I wanted to focus on. So now we're going to jump in and start actually building the metro system. All right, so let's get into actually building this metro system. Uh, first, I want to take a quick second to explain the metro stations that I'm going to be using. Uh, these are a set of metro stations built by Joe Boy BV. I want to a huge thanks to him because I love these metro stations and I've put a link to a collection that I built uh, on the steam workshop uh, in the description for the video that is just these metro stations uh, now I'll explain real quickly uh, how you can understand what they are from uh, just the icons and descriptions so the T1 tells you the number of tracks so in this example it's one track and then the symbol next to it is going to tell you its orientation to the street so it's going to 
it's a slash, so it's going to be a 45 degree angle in relation to the street, uh, starting at the top right and ending at the top uh, at the bottom left. Uh, and then the last number is the level. So I believe the levels are 12, 24, and 36 meters deep. So this is going to be uh, one at the 12 meter level. Then the next one is exactly the same. It's just a level lower and then a level lower. I don't do a huge uh, amount with the different levels, although they do come in useful if you're near some uh, other underground objects like uh, underground power lines or an, a tunnel or an underground pedestrian walkway. So they can come in useful. Uh, then we go to the next, which is uh, the opposite direction. So it's the same uh, concept, except it's now got a different orientation to the street. So it's starting at the top left and ending at the bottom right in relation to the street. And that's all three levels. Uh, then we get into, this is parallel to the street. So now it's the, he's using the underscore symbol to let you know that it's parallel. Again, all three levels there. And now this is going to be perpendicular. So that symbol is the straight up and down mark. Again, all three levels there. Uh, and then we get to a cross. So uh, this is two tracks. So it's T2, two tracks in a cross shape uh, with the tracks at level two or level one and level two. Then the next one is the same with the tracks at level one and level three. And then with it at level two and level three. Then we get to parallel. So he uses the equal symbol there. Uh, at all the different levels there. Then we get to also parallel, but now perpendicular to the road. So you have two parallel tracks that are both perpendicular to the road, both at first level. And you've got the second level, the third level. Uh, then we have got a three track. So you can see you've got the up and down, underscore, up and down at level two, level one, and level two. And then our last one, which is actually gonna be the first station that we're gonna use is the hashtag symbol because it's four uh, different uh, tracks. And this is what we're gonna use for the center of our spoke and wheel system. So that gives you a little introduction to the different metro systems, uh, metro stations that I'll, I'll be using. I love these, as I mentioned in episode one, I'm trying to do this with as few mods as possible. These do not require any mods. So if you are a low or no mod player, you do not need any mods. There are some tricks to laying down tracks sometimes, and I will show you uh, how to get around uh, and navigate that uh, as we are actually putting them down. So let's jump out and take a look at our city from high above. So if I'm going to be building a spoke and wheel system, the wheel is gonna be going around this area, right? So my spokes, if you're just thinking about it spatially here, probably intersect somewhere right around in here. So let's zoom in right around in here. Now, the first thing I notice when I go in and take a look at this is there isn't really a lot of city in that area. So I'm just going to take a look at this general area and then we'll make a decision. Now, the next thing that I want to look at when I'm starting to plan out my system is tourism. So we go to our menu. We go down here to the tourism button, close that. Now all of our tourist areas are in pink. Why is this important? Because tourists coming from out of town, we would love them to use the metro system. So it makes sense to focus your metro system around uh, tourist areas. Now the one that jumps out at me, if this was the kind of geographic center of our city, is this area over here. And actually I, I knew that as I built the city. <laughs> uh, this was one of my first tourist areas that I ever built. And it's got, uh, what is this? The Expo Center, uh, the Maple Leaf Gardens, uh, a track and field. And then actually this is a football stadium for uh, 
I refer to it as football. I grew up in England, so I, I still refer to it as football. It is uh, not American football. It's real football. <laughs> so uh, you know, Americans out there can hate on me. I'm sorry. Uh, I do enjoy American football, but this to me is real football. Uh, this is actually a university. Um, uh, for some reason, when it, it was built in the uh, workshop, they made it function as a university. So, But this is a high tourist area, so this probably makes sense for us to put our first metro station in this area. Now, because that's that, there and we've got the river and we've got this area over here i think it makes sense to put it kind of in between in these two areas so uh, i think i actually want to put it right along in here and now i'm going to show you another little trick that i use when i am building my metro systems so i'm going to go into roads and then I'm going to go to pedestrian roads. These are also assets that you can get off of the Steam Workshop called the Zonable Pedestrian Roads. Uh, and I'm going to use just the regular old paved tiny road. And then what I do is I like to join up two sections of road. Now it does two things. It gives me a zonable area. But it also, you see what it did? It created a crosswalk here. So now we don't have to build a uh, pedestrian walk for people to get over to. In this case, this one was right here. So people would have walked across there. But I really like doing this with metros. I like joining up two roads with a pedestrian road so that it then creates these crosswalks on these main roads. So if you do it in an area that was say something like, uh, like this area here where it's really long without a crosswalk um, it would be good to have that crosswalk put in so people can get across it's one thing i see in some cities people will build this really 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 long road without realizing that there's no way for pedestrians to get across it and building these pedestrian roads uh, actually will will help with that so now let's go and grab our actually we already have it are we We're right there bang got that guy in there all right so i had some crashing issue that i think i have now fixed and i came back and rebuilt our main uh, metro station here in the center of town so now let's jump out over here to where our traffic problems are and take a look at what we've got going on here so we have this metro station here at the airport that I'm going to build into our wheel. And I think that our next station is going to be kind of along this path here. I think we want to put it somewhere right along in here. So let's zoom in and take a look. We've got these two areas and I think we want to put them right in between here. So let's jump over and grab our road and our curvy road tool. Now I've got a pillar there that we need to avoid. So let's bring it out to here and then we'll curve it out just a little bit. And this should then allow us to, now let me see if I can get this curved around here. There, and that will then let us, yes. All right, perfect. So now we should be able to put our metro station in right here. Now you'll notice I'm using the cross uh, metro station because we want to have our wheel coming through here, but this is also potentially going to be a spoke. Uh, and then as the city grows, this will also allow me to continue it on out past there. So now we've got our first uh, metro station out for our wheel. I'm going to drop into a time lapse so you don't have to watch me grind through putting all of these in at regular speed. And then once I've got all of those in and the tunnel connections 
Uh, connecting them up, I'll pop out the other side and we will work on the spokes. Alright, so the next section of this process actually turned out to be quite a bit more challenging than I had expected. Uh, I have built a hub and spoke metro system before, but it's been organically as a city has grown. And so actually what I had to do was I had to take a screenshot and then I opened that screenshot in a paint program and used a paint program to draw where I thought the lines should go to connect to the different uh, sections on the outside of the wheel and then kind of massaged those to figure out where I wanted to put the corresponding stations so i will uh, throw up a picture of the paint file that i ended up with so you can get an idea of what i'm talking about but we'll now drop in and put in the individual stations here so what i did when i was building the spokes was i figured out that there are 14 different stations and so if there are 14 stations that means that seven stations apart should be connected if you're going to have the spoke go straight across so as an example uh, this station here uh, should connect up to this station directly across from it but because of uh, uh, some logistical things I ended up actually connecting it over here but you get the idea you should have that spoke like a wheel go across the wheel so uh, like I said I will throw up a picture of the paint file here and let you take a look at it And you can see how I drew those in and then I used the stars to denote where I wanted to put the stations. So let's drop back in and I will go ahead and start placing those stations. So we are going to start out down here uh, on our main line. And that is going to go right here. That is going to be the H style. Is that correct? Yes, going across. All right. Now, let's go down to the Underhill Mall area. And then we want to put in just a regular cross station. There's my little cross. There we go. We want to throw that guy in there. Now over here in Lake Elizabeth Hills, I built a little road. So you'll notice I built some roads already just to give myself an idea of where I wanted these uh, stations to be. So I wasn't hunting around like an idiot uh, and wasting all of your time. <laughs> but this will give you an idea of how I placed the stations. All right, and then down here, we want to place just a regular parallel station. There we go. 
Alright, now out by the beach. I'm going to have station. What is that going to be? It's going to be right in here. Cross. Throw that in here. And then another one over here. Okay, good. Now let's go back up to the Ember Park area. And this is going to be one of the big hashtag stations right across from my, th that's a library, yeah. Library named after my grandfather. <laughs> I named a lot of the schools and things like that after people in my family. So you'll see the same names over and over. And then the middle river we have, that one is right here. And then over here, one here across from this, that's a library named after my mom. And this one, I think we want it to be the diagonal, which is the very first one. Yes. Put that in there. And then we have got already this. That is the train station asset. I will let because what is that called? It's called the city station. It's a nice asset uh, out on the Steam Workshop that gives you a uh, passenger rail station and then a metro station underneath. Then out in the inner peninsula, right here, we are going to do just a single platform. This needs to be this one, I believe. Where did that road go? There we go. And then out here, we are going to put one across from this station here. We want this to connect. I'm actually gonna move it over just a little bit. And actually, let's do it on this side of the street. I'm not sure why, but I like it there better. Okay, now then we have three stations down here. Oh, they're over here. And these are all going to be this direction. We're going to have one there. We'll switch sides of the street. One there. And one here. And I believe that leaves us with just one more. Yes, up in the... Western Warehouse District. Oh, it's right next door. Right across from, I think this is our cargo terminal. Yeah, Cargo Harbor, and named after my dad. <laughs> I literally named everything after people in my family. And this is just going to be this direction. Nope, we need the other one here. I think I can sneak this in. Here on this side, yes, that will work. There, excellent. So we now have all of our stations put in and that probably doesn't make a whole ton of sense uh, looking at it from here, although I did show you the picture with the lines drawn in. All right, so now I'm gonna drop into a time-lapse to draw all the tunnels in, as well as putting in the individual lines, and then I'll pop out the other side and we'll turn it on and see how our traffic improves.
So we are going to drop out of the time lapse there because I wanted to show you something quickly about creating the metro lines using these uh, metro station assets. And then I will do the rest of the metro lines off camera as it is a little bit tedious. So uh, if you're going to start a line uh, like you normally would, we'll go in here and we'll start here. And we'll come back here. Continue along. Our metro stops. Get to here. And then we'll be coming back and everything seems fine on these one track stations everything is fine but when you get to a multi-track station you'll notice that it doesn't want to let you put a station on the track now reason for that is for whatever reason the way these assets are built a line has to be going through all of the tracks in order for you to put multiple stops on one track so what you have to do is See here, it does the same thing. It wants me to put a station on these tracks. So what you have to do is actually go all the way to the end, complete the line. And then as an example, let's take a look at this station here. And if I drag, it still wants me to put that station over there and says cannot find path, right? So what you have to do is you have to go to the corresponding line going across and I'm just going to go all the way to the end here and come back all the way to here complete the line now if we come back to our station you have lines going through each one, right? So we try to create another stop. It still wants to put that over there, right? So, but if we create a stop here, it will let us put that stop there and then it will also let us put that stop there. So you have to have a line and a station on each track in order to get double stations so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go and just create the lines end to end for all of the tracks and then i'll come back and individually put in those stations now where this can be a problem is in a situation like this if i were to try and create a line going across here because there's only one station here and there's not a line going across it uh, even though I have tracks 
on or, or a line on both tracks it still is going to try and put the second station from this track on here. So unfortunately, the only way to remedy it is to actually come out here, build a little dummy station, build a track to it, drag the line out, complete it, have that station, put both stations in, and then you drag the line back and bulldoze all of that stuff so it will cost a little bit extra but i really 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 love the fact that you don't have to use mods for these stations so it is a little bit of an inconvenience but just wanted to make sure that you knew that um, about these assets so uh, if you have more questions about it leave comments below and maybe i'll do a mini episode showing all of the different uh, variations of this issue so with that, I'll finish these up off camera and be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the moment we have been waiting for our metro system is completely rebuilt. It looks beautiful. So one quick thing that I wanted to note as I was putting in the metro lines, I wanted to mention there are times where when I'm goofing around with my metro or first building it or I'm adding in a line, I will not notice that I have not put in stops correctly. One way to double check for that is to make sure that you always have an even number of stops. If you're on a line uh, that's a direct line like this and you start at one end, you're gonna have one stop here, two stops here, two stops here, two stops here, and then a stop at the end. So it always should be an even number. Now, I also happen just happen to have an even number on the ring that could be even or odd and of course you could have multiple problems and be missing multiple stops that would still give you an even number but usually you're just missing one stop so that is a great way to double check and make sure that uh, all of your stops are set up correctly i also went in and took an eyeball at the a uh, number of vehicles on each line and they all look pretty good. We will come in and adjust those as we are uh, building back into the system and still having more people starting up. We'll keep an eye on that. So, all right, we're going to go ahead and unpause the game and let it start up. Let's just take one quick look at where our traffic is right now at 28 percent and through various times that I've had to unpause the game our population has slid all the way down to 78.5 so hopefully we can reverse that fairly quickly all right here we go we're going to unpause and then I will check in uh, as we see improvement so let's pop in and take a look. I went back and checked that we started the simulation on the 7th of September. So it's three months later, the 7th of December, and already 4,700 people uh, almost using our public transportation system. Look at that number. That is unbelievable. Now, this is how I check my metro line. So let's pop into this marina line here. I go in and the first thing I do is I take a look at all the individual stops and it doesn't look like there's any big bottlenecks. And then I take a look at how full the vehicles are. In this case, we've got one that's almost empty, a couple that are almost empty and no big bottlenecks. So I think that 10 uh, number is pretty good there. Uh, on the airport line, however, uh, I noticed there is a bottleneck. So we've got 159 people at this station. Where is that? That is the airport. So 159 people at that station. So we probably want to just go ahead and bump that up to 13 there. So looking good on the usage. Let's go ahead and take a look at the traffic traffic up to 42% already and let's pop out 
and actually look at some of the problem areas. If you remember, this area in here was a huge problem, almost completely clear now. We still got a little bit of a backup here. Uh, that will probably get taken care of when we add buses. And yeah, we've got a bus station there that is not being utilized right now because we don't have any bus lines. But that is looking good. Over here also uh, was a big issue. Now almost completely clear. Uh, we still do have some issues here. And the big uh, pileup along this freeway is still there. That's going to take a while to clear out, but looking good on that. Uh, along here as well, still people coming out of the airport. Although if you remember, that was all the way back down here. So it is starting to dwindle. It just takes a while for that to work through. Uh, although we've got so many people using that uh, system. It uh, is amazing to me again. I Watching it fall apart was kind of surprised. I don't know why I'm so surprised that it's going the opposite way, but I have to say I'm a little bit surprised how quickly it has started to, to uh, reverse itself. From a population standpoint, we're at 78,000. So let's continue to uh, let it run and I will check back in again in a few minutes. Well, we have gone one entire year. It is now back to the beginning of September and the following year, and our traffic has gotten up to 60%. Now, I will make an admission. Uh, I did put in a couple of slip lanes up in this area here. Um, it just was completely locked up, so I, I put in a couple of slip lanes there and that freed this whole area up, which has now unclogged this whole section here. If you remember, this red actually stretched all the way along here and all the way down along here, back to here. This is as far as the traffic got. So that has completely released. Now, because we released a bunch of that traffic, this has started to get a little bit busier, although it's red, it's not really backed up. Uh, it's just busy. Uh, so that's not really that big of a deal. In here is still hanging on, but I think that should get cleared up. Our population is completely turned around. We're up to 86,000, just shy of 87,000 Sims now. Uh, and then there was one thing about the lines I wanted to mention uh, on the transportation lines. On metros, I have realized that when you're looking at the number of vehicles, a good estimation of a good number of vehicles to have is roughly one vehicle per 100 people. Now, I'm a little bit high at this point because I wanted to give enough room, but generally that is where you start to see a big you know, ballooning numbers at individual stops. So this was an example. It was down at 12 vehicles and we had a bunch of stops that uh, had, I think one of them had 300 people at it and I bumped it up to uh, just over one vehicle per 100 people using the line and that cleared that up. So that definitely is another little rule of thumb that I have figured out. So with that, we are going to wrap up this episode. I think getting up to 60% traffic is pretty good. And uh, we will uh, start in on the bus lines for the next episode. As always, subscribe if you like the video series. Uh, give me a like and be sure to hit the bell if you subscribe so you get alerted for new videos. And again, if you have a city that you would like me to add a metro or bus system to, please see the description below for how to send it to me. And until next time... Mind the gap.